All right, Jerry, thank you very much. Uh, here with the coach, and uh, coach, 3-0 uh, and on the season. Another outstanding effort, uh, very similar to last week. Uh, even though you jumped out early last week against Virginia, this time you found yourself in a 7-0 hole. But tell you what, once you guys really got it going defensively and particularly offensively, you really got it going. Yeah, I thought uh, all three phases, our, our coaches did a great job this week. Of, of We had a great plan, another great week of preparation. Uh, <laughs> at some point, somebody's going to score on us, and we have to see how we, we can respond. And I thought our guys did a great job of, of just playing the next play. Uh, whether that was a, a you know a great play or a, a bad play, our guys just had a great mindset this week um, and and put us in a in a position where we, where we need to be. Kind of an odd start to the game, and yet I think like you talked about the way your players responded, particularly in offense, where they made a few mistakes here and there, uncharacteristic, and yet they came right back out and went to work. Definitely, and that's going to happen. I mean, we're going to whether it's a penalty or a drop ball or whatever happens, a miss, you know, miss throw, missed assignment. Uh, we're going to make a few mistakes, and it's it's how you react to those mistakes that's going to define you in the long term. And another another great effort by our guys. Uh, I love how our guys play, um, and then got to get get healthy here during the bye week um, and move forward. I'm going to start with the defensive side of the ball because again, I thought they were consistent throughout. Uh, Throughout the game, I mean, the 180-yard drive and other than that until the end of the game in junk time, the defense absolutely took over at the line of scrimmage where they really needed to. Yeah, they did a great job. Uh, Nick and the, and the staff had a great plan for, for these guys, and, and it was basically just that, see how, how we could kind of hold up against their front, which was outstanding. And uh, our guys really did a great job of rallying to the ball. Um, and yeah, they got one late there. Just for, I wish for our own guys' sake, I wish they wouldn't have, but that, you know, that, that's something to build on. But um, Really proud of those guys. In the last two weeks, uh, you guys did a great job of not allowing explosion plays. One run against Virginia, one big pass play today for 51 yards. Other than that, really keeping things in front of you. Yeah, that's our philosophy. We want to make them earn it. And uh, want to put pressure on the quarterback, whether it's just just anxiety in terms of our looks or, or rushing the passer, and then make them earn it. And when you tackle well and you don't give up those explosive plays, that, that's how that happens. And people are going to get a couple first downs here and there. And that, that's... That's going to happen. We're going to give up a couple first downs or a, a check down or, you know, like Virginia worked the tight ends a bunch. But if you have to do that for 90 yards, you're not going to be very successful. And your offense got in a great rhythm today, too, particularly through the air. Yeah, I really wanted to, to try to uh, play to tempo, which we finally got going there in the second quarter, uh, playing kind of at, at our tempo. Uh, had a couple chances to make some some big plays there in the first quarter that, that, that we either dropped or missed uh, in the passing game. But again, uh, Lube and, and Frosty did a great job uh, game plan wise in that regard this week. Um, and now just uh, head out recruiting and get ready for who's next, Cal. And we got to see Johnny Munt uh, show his stuff today. Johnny Munt, another guy that just works his tail off. Had a great week of practice uh, and, and really, really happy for him and, and, and for our guys. They, they were He's just one of those guys that y you can't help but like and just works really hard. Uh, the team was, you know, going crazy for, for, for how well he played. And uh, again, a, a young guy, true freshman who, who has a bright future. Non-conference games now, the way the team excited to get the Pac-12 season started off here in a couple weeks? I think we're excited for whatever's next, and, and that's the neat part of, of you, you play a team like Tennessee. That's a, that's, a, that's a good football team. There's a lot of great athletes on that team, and they're, they're getting it going from a, a program standpoint. Uh, and now we have to take advantage of this bye week and, and get better. You know, it's not a it's not where, time where you you put it in neutral and just kind of coast. We want to obviously we need to improve our health. We need to take advantage of it for our young guys and, and build our depth and then hit the ground running for, for Cal coming up. All right, coach. Well, congratulations. Three and on the season. We'll look forward to talking here in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Jorgie. All right, Jerry, back up to you. All right, guys, first, the lighting OK? OK. You look fabulous. <laughs> Raise your hand, I'll call on you right here in the back. Mark, back here. Um, in game planning, was the emphasis to go more through the air um, this this game? Was there something you saw on film um, where you thought you could exploit Tennessee through the air? Um, there were some things formationally that, that, that you know, we thought we could kind of lock them into a couple defenses and and they had a plan uh, that was similar to, to what we anticipated. Um, and our guys just did a great job of, of executing that this week. Um, uh, kind of tried to set up some things early with our formations and, and verify and validate some of those things that, that we had uh, in the back of our mind. And our, you know, the, the passing game came alive. So I guess we can complete a pass again. I don't. I, what's our? I haven't even looked at our numbers yet, but we'll take that.
<laughs> yeah, you mentioned uh, talking to Jordy, uh, Johnny Munt. Uh, what was it in, in particular in his practice? Was it work ethic, or you just start catching on to the playbook, or what was it that let him shine a little bit today? Guy's rock solid. He comes and works every day. Uh, has a great attitude. He's just a, like I said. He's just a great. He's a guy you root for. Uh, there's a lot of guys like that on our team, but he in particular is just a real uh, positive guy. Uh, and, and works really hard, and he wants to do everything he can to, to, to help our team. And so, you know, his number got called several times today, and he, he rose to the challenge, did a great job on, on their defensive ends, who are very talented guys, uh, blocking them in one-on-one -on -one situations, and uh, really excited for his future. Mark, how would you describe the start of your guys' game? Uh, states in there. How would you describe it? Interesting. You know, had... Uh, Missed the field goal, had the you know had a penalty on the on the opening kickoff, which we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, decided to go for it on that fourth down, scored, and we'll take a look at that one as well. Um, but happy with how our guys responded. I mean, there's <laughs> it's not going to be perfect. We're not going to win 107 to zero uh, with no issues of any kind. And I thought our guys did a great job of responding to to moderate issues, and and kept playing. You mentioned the response. Marcus in particular, he looked a little shaky early. What changed for him? I think he just settled down. You know, he, he had a couple plays there early that were stone cold drops. And then he, he um, we <laughs> which is a weird problem. How we had two guys wide open on that one where he missed. Uh, he ended up throwing to Braylon. And I think he was kind of between those two guys, you know, and he, he saw two guys wide open. And that doesn't happen very often. And he was kind of stuck right in between them. And, and, and that happens. Uh, but. Marcus is a stud. Would not trade that dude for anybody. Right here. Why didn't Loyola play? Circumstances. <laughs> be healthy. Hey, Circumstances. Can you be more specific? I can't. Circumstances is extremely specific. That's one word. We'd like to be two for two. Um, yeah, missed, missed the one field goal. Um, that, that, you know, will remain uh, an ongoing competition. Mark, the score ends up lopsided, but is this a good game in terms of it really was pretty competitive for a quarter and a half and you really had to, you know, play the whole game? Well, we know we're going to get everybody's best shot, and I th those guys came out uh, very enthusiastic. And, and by the end of the third quarter, things were different. And, you know, that's what we pride ourselves on is we're going to play till the end. No matter who's in there, no matter who, what the score is, we're, we're, we're finishing the game. And so very proud of our, our effort in that regard. What did it feel like for you to be behind in the game? <laughs> Felt fine. I mean, obviously, at the end, when we look up, we don't want to be behind. But, uh, again, that, that's, if that's our big moment of adversity, we're going to have a pretty good year. What's different about Marcus in Game 3 this time compared to last year? In Game 3 this year compared to Game 3 last year? I think we know what we have, you know, a little bit more. And, and I think he's a guy, again, that, that – and I say, you know, what we have. We, we thought Marcus was outstanding from when he showed up in high school camp. And we're like, wow, this guy could be special. Um, he's developed – in a lot of ways off the field as a leader, uh, has always been an unbelievably high character kid. Uh, and, and our guys will play for that guy. Um, and so that, that development of his, just his, his maturation as a leader is something that has spread throughout our team. Uh, and then we caught the ball better today. Um, he made a couple, couple better decisions and, and turned, out, turned out okay. Anybody else? Back here in the back, uh, Coach, what in specifically were you excited about on the defensive side of things today? A lot. I thought we ran really well with the ball. Um, you know, had a couple sporadic tackle, you know, missed tackles, uh, but played really, really hard. Uh, got, I think we got everybody into the game that was eligible. Knock on wood, got out of there healthy uh, for the most part. And I thought, I thought our guys played hard. And, if, if, again, if we're playing the next play as hard as we possibly can, mission accomplished. Right here. Mark, has anything surprised you about this team through your non-conference schedule, or is this kind of what you expected? Uh, anything surprised me? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you, when you're around our guys, you know that they're going to play hard. You know they're going to work hard. Uh, you don't know exactly how they're going to respond to either success or adversity. And that's that's 
you know, why we have games and why we try to put them in as many possible uh, situations to see how they react uh, in, in practice. But very happy with how they responded to our, you know, moments of adversity today. And, and now we need to handle this bye week. We need to, to, to get better, make great decisions off the field, and, and get ready for Cal. Way in the back. You just mentioned the bye week. What, what will your process be for the bye week and then moving into the game week against Cal? We're going to basically have treatment uh, the next couple days. We won't practice tomorrow or the next day. We're going to practice Tuesday, thir uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Kind of our, uh, have, have reworked our bye week schedule a little bit, uh, trying to just project it toward the future uh, and in terms of, you know, Resting some guys, getting healthy, but at the same time staying sharp. Get a ton of work with our young guys, and and uh, and and still getting ready for Cal. Uh, three games in, can you be happier with Mike and Tyner? Um, three games in your uh, college career. Those guys are they're. they're they're really fun to be around. You know, Thomas is a quieter guy than, than Johnny. Johnny's a pretty quiet guy as well, but but just they work. You know, uh, Thomas, uh, there was one article that, that I read about. He had this, like, five-star complex. I've never seen that once. He know, he doesn't say <laughs> five words during practice, and, and he's, he works hard. And he's, he's figuring out how to practice, um, uh, you know, at the, the level we, we need. Um, and and Johnny's, Johnny's been a great worker from day one. Uh, and so, again, those guys have really bright futures and, and – uh, how good they are depend is really up to them. Right back there. Do you think Munch will be uh, a bigger part of the offense going forward, or will it just be kind of dependent on the uh, De circumstances? Circumstances, yeah. It just depends on, on – no, I'd see – ah, yeah, I got you. Not those circumstances. <laughs> I meant coverage, decision by the quarterback. I like your style. You could hire him at the Coos Bay World right there. Got a prospect. Taylor Hart is in the back room. Perfect. Taylor Hart, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, we'll see going forward. He, he, uh, he's a guy that, that, that uh, you know, you learn a lot about those guys as they, they get hit in the face by an all-SEC defensive end and, and bounce back and, and play like that. You learn something about that guy. Uh, and so going forward, we'll, we'll see how his role changes, adapts, et cetera. You brought it up. You said we were. It was adversity. I was quoting you. What do you consider the adversity? N not every single thing was perfect. That's it. That's adverse conditions. No, I mean, it, it, anytime you know it's not going perfectly, there's there's guys can react one way or the other, and and when you see how our guys reacted, kept playing, regardless of being uh, up whatever it was forty or whatever it was at the time or down seven, they played. And, and that kind of uh, perseverance will pay off down the road. What is your philosophy sort of with a player getting sick and somebody else stepping in and kind of doing the Lou Gehrig thing, maybe having a great game? This, what, what, what do you think in that's in those terms? If Johnny Munton can play 2,192 consecutive games, I would be jacked. <laughs> Was that the record? Something like that, right? 2,150, right? 2,150? We will call Cal Ripken Jr. as well. Bring him in. It, 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 that's it. Just depends. I mean, we've got a lot of ground to cover. The guys that practice well are going to play, and that's it. Mark, can you talk about the offensive line? Um, it seemed like they got in a groove. I think on their second and third offensive possession, um, but they really hung in on the sides. And will Colt play with the Cal in the Cal game? I don't know. I don't know if I'll be at the Cal game. I'd like to be. Um, again, uh, the the guys that practice well and are, are going to play um, on the second part, on the first part, uh, I thought our guys did a great job of, of, of identification today. Uh, they, were, they were a little bit uh, more standard kind of up front. Uh, that's not a fault of them. That's just how they play uh, between Scott Frost, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Hold your applause. Uh, between um, Virginia and Nickel State, there were just a, a, a bunch of different looks, and they did a, a, a much better job identifying looks today. And, and uh, we challenged them pretty good on, on both sides of the ball uh, and, and happy for them.